This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a ghastly, ghostly spirit. I provided this creepy background interior, this photo of a girl dressed as a ghost, and a fog brush that we'll use to give our image atmosphere. The first step is to separate the girl from the background. If you're using CC2020 or later, unlock the background and open the Properties panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Properties. Click Remove Background. Photoshop automatically creates a layer mask of our subject, thereby masking out the background. If you're using CC 2018 or 2019, open your Quick Selection tool and click Select Subject. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2018, just drag your Quick Selection tool over your subject to select it. Then, click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Open your Move tool and drag your subject onto the tab of the background. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. To adjust its size, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner and drag it in or out. To reposition it, just drag it. Then press Enter or Return. We'll convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively and replace it with another subject without having to redo most of the effects. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Color Lookup. Open Load 3D LUT. LUT is an acronym for a lookup table. These presets are commonly used in the film industry to adjust the color grading and the color cast of film. Click HorrorBlue.3DL. Double click an empty area of the subjects layer to open the layer style window. We'll blend the girl with the background using Blend If. Basically, Blend If uses the luminosity of layers to blend them together. The current layer is named this layer in older versions. This represents the active layer in our layers panel, which in our case is the girl. The underlying layer represents all the layers below the active layer, which in our case is the background. When we move the sliders of the current layer, it'll clip off the shadows or the highlights of the girl. Conversely, when we move the sliders of the underlying layer, it'll punch the shadows or the highlights of the background through the girl. We can blend it smoothly by placing our cursor in the middle of the slider and pressing Alt or Option. When we click it, it splits the icon in half. Dragging the inside half to the center blends the highlights of the photo smoothly. For this image, let's drag the right half of the current layer's shadow slider to approximately 233. Drag its left half to approximately 50. Reduce its opacity to 60%. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Field Blur. Field Blur allows us to build a gradient of blurs by defining multiple blur points with different amounts of blur. In this case, we'll use just one blur gradient. We can adjust the amount of blur by rotating the blur handle on the blur ring. Notice the blur amount is sliding in tandem with the blur amount on the blur ring. Let's blur it 50 pixels. Open Iris Blur. I did an in-depth tutorial on Iris Blur, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided that link as well. Drag the center of the blur pin over the center of our subject. Go to the bottom outside of the blur and drag it down approximately this much. Go to either side and drag it out to approximately here. Drag the inside pins in to about here and make the blur amount around 30 pixels. 
Then click OK. Let's save some space in the Layers panel by collapsing the Smart Filter. Make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Change its Blend Mode to Pin Light and increase its opacity to 65%. Open the Copy Smart Filter and double-click Blur Gallery to open it. Drag the Iris Blur slider to the left to 10 pixels. Open Field Blur and drag the slider to 4 pixels. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Distort folder and click Diffuse Glow. The graininess is 0, the glow amount is 1, and the clear amount is 10. Collapse the Smart Filters and make a copy of this layer. Change its Blend Mode to Normal. We'll create an inverted layer mask next to it by Alt or Option clicking the layer mask icon. This makes the layer mask black. Open your Brush Tool and Brush Picker. Pick a soft, round brush. We'll adjust its size in a moment. Its hardness is 0% and make its opacity between 55 and 60%. To adjust the brush's size, make sure the Caps Lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush once over the face and over the gown and sleeve. Increase its opacity back to 100% and brush over the edges of the hair. Make a copy of this layer and unlink the layer mask. Drag the layer mask to the trash and open the smart filters of this layer. Drag them to the trash as well. Decrease the opacity to 40%. Open the Transform tool and drag it out a little. Click the Warp Transform icon and open the default list of grid presets. Click 3x3. Three three. Drag various anchor points to warp the shape of your ghost until you like the way it looks. Feel free to drag any of the points in or out. You can cross them over. All right. Press V to open back your Move Tool and feel free to reposition it. Go to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. Make the amount 10, Zoom, and Best. Next, we'll add the fog. Make a new layer and open your Brush Tool. Press X to invert the foreground and background colors, so white is our foreground color. Open the Brush Picker. After you install the fog brush I provided, scroll to the bottom and open the Fog Brush folder. Click the brush inside the folder and press Enter or Return. Place your brush approximately here and click once. Open your Transform tool. Go to the top middle anchor point and press and hold the Shift key as you drag the top of the Transform's bounding box down this much. Go to the middle of either side of the bounding box and press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out about this much. Then press Enter or Return. Thanks for watching.